Let's talk about the Secure Act 2.0's free money provision, the Savers Match. Now, this was formally called the Savers Credit. Actually, right now, it's called the Savers Credit. But in the Secure Act 2.0, this is all gonna change. Now, they really should call this the Super Savers Credit because that's what I think it really caters to, not the people who can just save, but the super savers. And I think you're going to see why as we go through this. So I want to start with the summary version of what this change is going to be. And then I want to show you what you could do right now in order to get this free money. And then I'm going to talk about the two changes that the savers match has. One of them is good. Other one, not so good. But it kind of highlights what you can do right now from now until about 2027. So this is a little bit farther off but you could take action right now and take advantage of the savers credit. So again, let's start with the summary version and let's go through that together. So right here, I have that summary version that I went over the other day, and this is the savers match. In a nutshell, this is going to be a credit that is gonna get put directly into your IRA or your retirement plan, and it's gonna be a match at a rate of 50% up to $2,000. This 50% up to $2,000 is exactly the same as it's been, and it is this year as well, and for next year as well. It's 50% or up to 50% if you save $2,000. Basically what this is saying is, if you save $2,000 into your own retirement plan, whether it's an IRA or a workplace retirement plan, the government is going to give you an additional 50% match, which would be $1,000. So you can get up to $2,000 for married filing jointly if you and your spouse both save $4,000. So that's you save $4,000 and you get $2,000 as a contribution into that retirement plan. Now, I do have a video that talks about the savers credit, but to give you a quick recap in 2022, which is something that you could still do up until your tax filing deadline by making a contribution to your retirement plan, you can get that 50% contribution as long, if you're married filing jointly, as long as your adjusted gross income is below 41,000, head of household is 30,750, and all other filers are $20,500. Now this gets reduced as your income goes above these thresholds, up to 68,000, 51,000 for head of household, and then 34,000 for singles. Now don't think of this as just your adjusted gross income. Remember, if you put it into a workplace retirement plan, that's gonna lower your adjusted gross income to qualify you for these credits. So for those super savers out there, you can drive down your income if you do this correctly and still make significantly more than what you're seeing on the screen right here. And in fact, if you watch my savers credit videos, you're gonna see exactly that. I literally will walk you through the math on those videos to show you that you can earn significantly more and still qualify to get this credit. Now, here is what's gonna change. And I'm gonna bring up my notes on this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here's my scanned in version of the savers credit with my notes. So this is the savers match. I keep on calling it the credit, but it's the savers match. And it's gonna be the same $2,000 only instead of a tax credit, you're gonna get it in the form of a match that goes directly into your IRA or your workplace plan. Now, this is gonna happen once you do your taxes. That's what it's saying right here. It will be a 50% match. However, if it comes out to under $100, it's just gonna come as an ordinary tax credit to lower your taxable income. And that will be a 50% match. Now, what's going to change as we scroll down here are the modified adjusted gross incomes, which are kind of strange to me because these modified adjusted gross incomes for this savers match are not going into effect until 2027. And let's take a look at this again. So 41,000 to 71,000 for married filing jointly. Let me flip back to this. 2022, that 50% threshold is from 41,000 and it goes down to or up to 68,000 where that range then increases to 43.5 for 2023 to 73,000. So those ranges are lower and they're for 2027. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why they didn't increase it further. There is a provision that's saying that they're gonna increase it, but it's gonna start there. It's gonna start at these amounts. 
So for singles, it's 20,500 to 35,500, which is exactly 50% of married filing jointly. And head of household is three quarters of what married filing jointly is. So it's 30,750 to 53,000 250. You can see that right there. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further to the next page and we're going to look at what qualifies, well, dependents and full-time students are not eligible. That eliminates anybody who is in college, who has a part-time job and could possibly save into the retirement plan. You don't qualify for this anymore. Then if you take a look at what qualifies, it's only the elective deferrals. So if you have a SEP where it's only employer funded, it looks like that will not qualify. So it's only elective deferrals. So things like your IRA or your workplace plan. In addition to that, if you have any distributions, basically the math is contributions minus your distributions will give you the eligible amount for the contribution. This is also going to go back two years, including the tax year you're in, and it's gonna look forward one year. Because what they don't want you to do is game the system, saying that you're gonna just get this free money and then you're gonna take it out of the retirement plan. They will have a clawback feature that is basically gonna say, hey, if we gave you the money and you didn't meet these criteria, we're gonna take it right back. Now, if we go down further, it also is gonna rope in the spouse. So if your spouse takes out money, out of their own retirement plan, it's going to also claw back the amount that you could have potentially received as a matching contribution. Now here is what I think is the worst of all of these provisions, and that's the modified adjusted gross income. So before we saw it, the modified adjusted gross incomes as these thresholds. However, what's changing, and this is a big change, is the fact that it is without regard, and it says it right here, without regard to any exclusion or deduction allowed for any qualified retirement savings contribution made during the taxable year. So one of the things I've talked about in the past is if you're a super saver, then you could save a bunch of money into your workplace plan or your, your self-employed retirement plan like a solo 401k and reduce your adjusted gross income and potentially qualify for this credit. However, that is getting next. So your adjusted gross income or your modified adjusted gross income will add back those pre-tax contributions, which really, in my opinion, makes this probably obsolete almost. Like how many people are gonna be able to do this if you're not a student or you're not a dependent? So you're on your own, you're paying all of your expense. I just think about that, you're paying everything. You're, it's gonna be very difficult to do this in addition to those that are making are actually making $41,000 before any of these, these contributions. So that's going to be a, a tough challenge in order to meet these requirements. So I don't know why they did that. Um, lowered the, lowered the income thresholds basically, and made it so you can't save to actually qualify for this tax credit. It incentivizes not making more money, which I never think is a good idea. I think that they should incentivize you to save. And that's what the intent of the saver's credit was to begin with. But here's where it all comes to, is from now until 2027, until this provision gets put into effect, pay attention to the saver's credit. And I've talked about it on, on previous videos. I think a lot of people just look at these and say, oh, my income isn't at these levels, but it's not. So you're just a gross income. So if you could save more into your workplace retirement plan, reduce that amount, then you could possibly qualify for the saver's credit at a significantly higher amount. Again, watch my other videos because I've gone through this math, but if you're a super saver, basically is what I'm saying, is if you can live on 41,000 in this case, or whatever the uh, thresholds were for the other other years, let's see it, see that up again. So under 41,000 as married filing jointly. And I know that's not a whole lot of money for married filing jointly, but if you can get there, then or even get to the 10% or the 20% by saving a ton pre-tax, that's a big savings. Because if you compare this to a regular match, if you contributed 2,000 with a 3% match, that's $60. This is giving you $1,000 in doing so. So that's a big deal. Although one provision was positive in this Secure Act 2.0, the other basically, in my opinion, has nixed this. So we have from now, until 2027. So this will reduce your taxable income if you can meet those requirements. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.